Yes, I'm Harvey Branscombe. I live in a small town in western Colorado, United States. I often call myself an elegant survivor. I have a history of taking courses in university of my choice and not someone else's. And I have started a small software company which sold millions of copies of software in Japan. And I am a seeker of truth and I ended up paying attention to elections. My website is electionquality.com, which is, uh, <laughs> that's where my heart and my mind is at, to try to achieve as much election quality as possible. But the real challenge with voting is to deal with the amazing diversity of the human condition. So different ages, different mental capabilities, different uh, physical capabilities, and we want to be able to provide equal access to all. That is a very difficult challenge, and uh, machines can both help and harm with that. So one of my biggest concerns is that there is a general impression that we're better off providing machines for the blind voters, for example, and because blind voters deserve to have the same treatment as the regular voters, maybe all of the voters should be voting by the system that provides the assistance for the blind. This is a kind of argument that we run into all the time. And that tends to lead to having a machine interceding between the voter and the record of the vote. In all cases, the state of Georgia is about to adopt such a system for the entire state. So after the uh, they adopted in 2002 a direct record electronic, all electronic ballot. Uh, now they're going to apparently adopt a paper uh, machine marked paper ballot, which will be very similar to having an elect it's basically an electronic ballot that happens to be printed onto paper. And it's hardly better than having the electronic ballot in the first place, unless the voters actually verify if they're capable of doing so, but they probably won't because there'll probably be a barcode that contains the voter intent. So they probably won't. Uh, they won't be able to read that. And even the text they will see, they probably won't understand what that text meant. I think the ideal election system would involve a uh, method of of obtaining the registration list and freezing it such that it's possible to verify who is registered to vote, as is the case in most elections around the world, I think, but not in my state. We, we actually don't do that at the moment. The voters would then uh, come to a precinct polling place, which is in their neighborhood, and the election would be managed by election judges who are actually their peers from the neighborhood, and the voters would actually see the process of voting and counting if they wish to, but as, as they vote, they will see the bulk of the election process happening. And then the ballots would be, uh, if either tabulated right there or moved to a central location to be tabulated, but in either case, they would be hand marked on paper other than specific cases for the disabled, where the disabled would be using a computer to listen to the choices and to mark a piece of paper, and then that a separate computer software would read back the contents of that paper in audio to those voters so that they actually verify what is on the paper using a software independent mechanism. So by those two methods, hand marking or real verification on paper, one would have an accurate representation of the voter intent. And that gets tabulated and unofficial results produced. And then based on the margin of victory for each contest, a sample would be selected by a random selection process that involves a public throwing of dice to uh, create a uh, pseudo-random sequence of numbers which cannot be predicted in advance and those would have already been assigned to uh, specific ballots. Those ballots would be uh, obtained and read by individuals 
and compared to the pattern which the voting system produced. And if discrepancies are discovered, then more ballots will be sampled. And if necessary, an entire full hand count of the contest will be done. And the, uh, that what I just described is basically fundamentally called a risk limiting audit. And the, the main main feature of it is that it's impossible to predict which ballots will be sampled for audit. The audit takes place in public and the uh, and if discrepancies are found then further auditing is done until a hand count might produce a different outcome. So that in a nutshell there is a little bit of a uh, side story on the remote voting, if, if you don't have precinct voting as I just described, and you have remote voting by mail, then I would prefer to see the voters actually bring the voted ballots in to an official and have their identity checked and have the, uh, the ballot included anonymously in the election in a situation where the voter can see that the ballot has been made anonymous and that their identity, their identity has been removed from it and they have been approved for voting so that there's no chance that they will be rejected from voting because their signature doesn't match. And we would, select, we would collect new signatures signed in person by voters in front of officials to be used as the reference signature for future uh, return by mail. But there would be a preference by the officials and the voters to actually see each other during the voting process at some point. So even though they're not standing in line waiting to actually vote at the polling place, which would be, now that's highly desirable because it provides for anonymity and uh, uh, protection from coercion and, and so forth. And it control over all the ballots, which you don't get when you mail them out. So, so in the United States, we do not have mandatory voting and if we were to do so, my guess is we would have uh, we would have revenge marking of the ballots, where the voters are likely to express distaste with the requirement for voting, rather than to provide an honest opinion of their voter intent. Or perhaps that is there, and there are cases actually where voters return a blank ballot, and there are rare cases where they actually write on the ballot how unhappy they are. And I guess there are even more rare cases where they actually artistically annotate the ballot with beautiful drawings and so forth. I, I have seen some of those cases. But the, uh, I don't, I'm guessing it's not wise to have mandatory voting just because the, uh, you're not likely to get a valid or accurate representation from the people who really don't want to, didn't intend to, uh, had no interest in voting. There is another aspect, though, I want to mention, which is the, a potential requirement to actually mark all of the contests on the ballot once you are voting. And that, ironically, would, it would make sense to have a t uh, target choice for not voting a particular contest so that the ballot would detect the fact that the voter did not intend to vote. We do not have that, and there's a ridiculous resistance to providing that, which often has to do with the real estate on the ballot. Supposedly there's not enough room for that particular target to go on. And the other one is that the candidates feel uh, they don't want to hear if the voters are not interested in voting on their, their contest. So that might be seen as an insult to them. And sometimes this is called none of the above. If, the, if it were that, if it were presented that way, it might actually be used as a kind of protest vote. But I'm thinking that it should be it should be called not voting. And the machine, of course, to, needs to detect whether there is a mark or not. And if there is a mark in not voting, it doesn't have to look through the other marks to see whether there was actually some voter intent there.